All right. Good afternoon, everyone, or whatever time you're going to watch this. Could be good evening. Could be good morning. So whenever you're watching it, great. This is uh, Dr. Laz, a.k.a. Lazman Hazeh. I love the nickname. One of my students gave it to me, and I think it's awesome. Instead of just Laz, Lazman Hazeh, which means uh, to this particular time, Lazman Hazeh, this time, this time and place. So here we are. I'm happy to have you guys. Thanks for tuning in. And I always like to refer to this as positive Torah vibes. And Torah is jam-packed. Hey, positive, right? Got to keep the positive state happening. So positive Torah vibes. I wanted to share something with you. I mentioned it in last week's um, quick talk. We're going to try to make this a quick one today. Because I know you've got only about four hours till Shabbat comes in. Uh, four and a half. So let's see what we can do here, okay? But it's something hugely important. Amazingly important. And I can't believe I just realized this uh, about a year ago. And I think it was when I was going over the Torah portion, this particular Torah portion. So this is actually another double header. We got... Uh, Two in a row, Achrei and Kedoshim. And it's um, for those of you who are uh, Gentile who are turning in, who are uh, not of the Jewish faith, thank you for tuning in also. Good to have you aboard. So each week we read a different Torah portion. This particular Sabbath we read two, so it's a double header. And uh, what I would like to speak with you about is something that occurs in the second Torah portion of Kedoshim, which means to be holy. Uh, we have a commandment actually to try to emulate holy ways and to become holy ourselves. And we do that by our actions, by how we talk, how we conduct ourselves, how we, even how we think, how we are in public, how we are in private. So all these things, if we can, as this portion requests of us is to be holy in everything that we do, to at least to try, to make make an effort. And there's a very famous verse in this week's Torah portion that says, in Hebrew, hocheach tochiach, which means, well, it's usually translated as you shall rebuke. But it's mentioned two times, hocheach and tochiach, which means like you really got to rebuke. You shall surely rebuke. And many of the English translations of the Bible will translate it into English as you shall surely rebuke. You got to get out there, give this person the old what for. Okay, blasting into this dude who's acting like an idiot, who's doing something really crazily wrong and... It's problematic. This thing always bothered me. Do we really need a double expression? Don't we often like, as I hate to say this, but you know, the human species, we seem to have no shortage of this notion of, you know, feeling holier than thou, feeling, feeling better than somebody else, and looking down on another. And judging another and very often we tend to judge somebody unfavorably and we also judge people by these stupid uh, notions in our head we judge people by how they look we judge people by the clothes that they wear the cars that they drive um, the color of their skin the religion that they are we fail to realize that each individual is a unique and amazing individual and it could be it's only the individual circumstances that led this person to be involved in these seemingly negative activities and perhaps if we were in their shoes if we were in their position maybe we would do much worse but at any rate I was always bothered by this we need a double expression like the good Lord has to tell us doubly, doubly rebuke somebody? Nah. Uh, didn't, didn't jive with me. Then, 
when I remember last year reading the Torah and earlier, we're now in the book of Leviticus, kind of in the middle of Leviticus, and the um, when we were in Genesis. So I was preparing the Torah reading, and I wanted to share with you because it's something that's right in Rashi, which is one of the main commentaries of the Torah, of the Bible. And Rashi uses the expression, well, I shouldn't say Rashi, it's the Torah uses the expression, again, hocheach, this idea of rebuking. But it says that, um, let me go to that one. Okay, hang in there with me. Okay, here we go. So Avram is sending his servant to find a wife for his son, for Yitzchak. He sends Eliezer out on this big mission, right? And um, and by the way, I want to just mention to you before we get into this that this idea of rebuking. I remember I ran a an alternative yeshiva high school program for about seven years. I had it three years in Brooklyn and almost four years down here in South Florida. And a couple of students were very involved in, um, in drugs. And so one student was so bothered by it, he'd go up to him and, you know, they were friends. And he would say, you know, you're killing yourself. What's wrong with you? If you don't stop, you know, you're going to end up, you know, a, a slab in the morgue and, you know, you got to cut this out. And anyhow, you know, nothing seemed to work. So one day I took him aside and I said to him, you know, uh, Reuven, I really appreciate what you're trying to do, but I think maybe your approach is wrong. And so this is what I wanted to get into. And this is what led to me wondering about this whole thing about doubly rebuking somebody. Because he would try to rebuke and rebuke, and I must admit I probably tried as well, and other students did. And these one or two students, do you think that sunk in at all? Do you think it did anything? Besides the fact that if, if it's an addiction problem, then you could talk to your blue in the face. It's like talking to a wall. Then they need really professional, you know, intake uh, help. They got to go to a rehab facility, et cetera, et cetera. But if it's somebody who you can reason with a little bit, there's ways to do it. And this is, this is the beauty of what the Torah is teaching us. So if we go back to the Torah portion in, in Bereshis, in Genesis, Chaye Sarah, the life of Sarah, we find the Torah uses two times the word hocheach, which seems to be rebuke, right? Hocheach to chiach, you shall surely rebuke. So um, when El is Eliezer going out looking for a wife and he wants to, he knows that Abraham's whole family, it's in their DNA, it's in their genes, they're kind, benevolent people. So he's looking for somebody who's kind. So he says, okay, I'm going to go to the well. And, and if somebody comes up to me, not I have to go up and ask them. Somebody's going to go up to come up to me and say, sir, would you like something to drink? And I, can I get something to get some water for your camels? So then I'll know that this is the one that you've chosen. She's fit already to become a member of Abraham's household and to marry uh, Yitzchak, to marry Isaac. And Abraham, as you probably know, he had a tent in the middle of the desert. Um, I was just recently in Beersheba and it's surrounded by desert. And our son, uh, uh, Cyril and his wife, Adina, their kids, they moved there about a year and a half ago. So uh, we've got family there and they live in Beersheba. This is the um, ancient biblical city that is actually jumping, very modern. Um, it's a huge uh, medical facility there now, uh, big computer center. It's, it's a bustling, amazing city. And I, I was very, uh, so impressed to see it. And as I visited that place. I hadn't been there since the, uh, I kid you not, the late 60s. So it had been a long time, 50 years. And when I went, it was, I felt like I was back in the times of Abraham. Like you would literally see camels all over and you know, you'd see Bedouins and there was a few places where you could get a cold drink. And it was a little teeny little town in the desert. It is a booming city now. And it's really uh, remarkable to see. So anyhow, he, uh, Abraham sends out Eliezer. He comes to the well. He says, these are the criteria. This person is going to come up and ask me. 
in the middle of the desert. Oh, you must be thirsty, sir. Can I get something to drink? Can I get some water for your camels? This is how I'll know. And the Torah uses the expression, Oso ha-chafta lavdecha yitzhak. This is the one that you have something for your servant Isaac. So um, when I was reading, I'm thinking, wait a minute. That's the word hocheach. That's the word rebuke. And this is the one, God Almighty, that you have rebuked for your servant Isaac? Nah, that doesn't make too much sense. So I looked in the Rashi. And this Rashi, the commentary says, he says like this. He says, Velashen hochachas, that this expression that we think is rebuke is bereras, means to choose. Okay? To clarify, to choose. So it's this is the one that you have chosen for your servant Isaac. Now we just go a couple pages later in the same portion. Um, so Rivka then brings, t goes home, tells everybody what how she met this guy, and the guy, you know, the whole episode. And Eliezer goes to meet the family, right? Meets the family, and he repeats the whole series of what happened. Abraham is, I work for Abraham. He's a great boss. He's an amazing guy. God Almighty has blessed him with so many things. And uh, I came to the well, and I said, Dear God, if you help me out on my mission. And if such and such happens, and this is the one I know that you have you have given the uh, good housekeeping seal of approval for this is a good one for uh for abraham's son isaac so he repeats the whole story and he uses the same word again that this is the one now we would again think if we remember from in today's this shabbos torah reading we would think it's rebuke double rebuke and eliezer says to the family this is Asher Hochiach Hashem Leven Adoni. This is the one that you have rebuked? That doesn't make sense. I look up the Rashi again. Okay, now again, somebody five years old who's studying Rashi will know this. Hochiach, Rashi says over here, Beira Vahadia. It's to choose and to make known. Vechain kal Hochacha Shabemikra. And so to every expression of this word, Hochacha, this these Hebrew letters in the Torah, Shabamikra Bara Dover means to clarify a matter. And what do you do when you're choosing something? You're clarifying. Is it from A, B, C, or D? You weigh your options, you clarify it, and you make a decision, you select it. So this is how you make a, a, a clear minded selection. Okay, these are the criteria. So Hocheach means. Rashi says right there, so to every time in the Chumash, Hocheach means to clarify the matter. So I want to emphatically state that every single edition and translation of the Bible, of the Torah, where it says that you shall surely rebuke in today's Torah portion in Kedoshim, where it says that it's always, it's usually translated, almost everyone I've seen in English says you shall surely rebuke your friend is a mistranslation. We've learned it from t two previous times where the Torah used that exact same word, hocheach. It means to choose and to clarify. And Rashi says the second time, don't get too freaked out. Don't start judging everybody, folks, because every time the word hocheach is mentioned, it means to clarify. So in this week where it says hocheach, tochiach, doubly so, it means you got to really work add it to help some clarify this issue with somebody whatever it is okay whatever the thing is if the person is doing something really wrong whether they're into something that's very negative that's going to hurt them maybe hurt others does not mean rebuke you don't just say hey you're a bum you're doing something wrong that's horrible that's terrible you know why because it's not going to work that way it's not going to work you're going to do the opposite you're going to push the person further away okay Sometimes just because somebody says it's A, you dafka are going to say you specifically will say it. No, it's B. Like I remember I was years ago. I was about to walk across a pipe over the canal, which is right in North Miami Beach. Now, okay, you might say, why is a? Uh, I was then in my fifties. <laughs> What's a fifty-year-old doing walking across a pipe over a canal? 
Well, I saw a teenager do it, and I thought, hey, what the heck, I think I should do it. And there's like a, a round metal barrier over these pipes, so you can't, it starts to go up at an incline, and then there's this big, huge thing. I had to climb over that, and so I, I went over it a couple times, and I'm looking at the long canal, you know, it's a good, like, I don't know, maybe 80 feet across, you know, maybe more, maybe 100 feet. And, you know, from the pipe, if you slip, you know, you're going in. <laughs> and who knows what's under there. And so a couple times I went over and didn't do it. One time I'm on the other side and this lady walks by and she says to me, oh, that's a great example for our kids. And as soon as she said that, I was like, bingo, the light went off. I'm doing it. Okay, because sometimes that's what we're like. Somebody tells us don't, we want to do it. Somebody tells us do it. No, we don't want to do it. We don't like to be told what to do. And we don't like to be told what not to do. She told me what not to do. You know what? I did it. And I walked all the way across. I was so proud of myself that I did it. And it took this one lady to tell me no. And then I said, oh, yeah, I can do it. All right? So that's what hocher tochir means in this portion. It does not mean rebuke, dear friends. Get that out of your head. It doesn't mean judge somebody. It doesn't mean that you're better. It doesn't mean that they're a bum. It doesn't mean that they're, you know, that they're going downhill. You're going uphill. It, we have to stop judging. And we have to just have compassion in our hearts. And if we live the first part, then of this sentence in the Torah, in this week's portion, then we can help them clarify the matter. Then we can help them choose perhaps a better way of dealing with things. Because the beginning of that Pusik, that verse in this week's portion, it's the Pusik 17, Yud Zion, and chapter 19. What's Yud Zion? Is the, the numerical equivalent of Tov, of good. The, the first part of that that Pasuk says, Lo sisna es Do not hate your brother in your heart. And then it, then it concludes that verse, Then you shall help him clarify the matter, Lo sisa And then you won't bear any type of sin because of this individual. In other words, you tried. You tried to help the person out. Okay, this person, let's say, needed money desperately. It's the quarantine. He's doing something really bad. Um, and you know what? There was an incident the other day. A, um, uh, I don't know, maybe you read about it. You know, I hate to bring up something negative, but a postal worker walked by a house that she had some arguments already with this family. They were waiting for their stimulus check. Um, and they got into an argument. I don't, I don't know exactly all the details, but she maced the guy and the guy took out a gun and shot her. Unfortunately, she passed. So uh, it, if we would have perhaps spoken to this guy earlier and just shown some compassion. I'm not saying she was at fault. I don't know the details, but I'm just saying perhaps we could have said Show some empathy. Oh, I'm sorry you didn't get your stimulus check. I know it's really hard. People are out of work. It must be really, really hard. Maybe there's something we can do. Um, maybe we can get you a free loan somewhere. Um, again, I'm not taking sides here. I don't know what happened. All I know is that somebody lost their life. And now this other individual, because uh, killing a federal employee is a federal crime, uh, this guy's gone. This guy's life is over too. So we have to, one, realize that what the Torah is speaking about is not rebuking. Rebuking is easy. Anybody can get out there with a stupid holier-than-thou attitude. It doesn't work. It might make you feel better, but you've done nothing. You've probably pushed the person further away, and now the person is going to do even worse. So what did you accomplish? Zilch, nada, absolutely nothing. On the other hand, if you do the first part, you don't hate this person, you have genuine compassion, concern for the person, then you can help them clarify the matter, and then you can help them choose something, a better way of dealing with things and doing things. So um, it's interesting because if you look up the numerical equivalent of which is you shall surely clarify you shall surely help the person make a good choice. It equals, listen to this, it equals the numerical equivalent of Hamaskil Yavin. The intelligent one will understand. 
it equals the numerical equivalent of Ka'or Hameir, the light which shines. It equals the numerical equivalent of Laose Chesed, the one who does kindness. And it equals the numerical equivalent of Ka'av Bala Simcha, like a father who is doing it with joy and wants only joy for this particular individual. Okay? So we got, we help people to make good choices. So going back to the situation at my uh, alternative high school. So I told, once I, you know, got this notion, I re actually, I, this was really um, something that I had learned and uh, people might know this, the ways of Aaron. It says, Oev Shalom Verodev Shalom. He loved peace, pursued peace. We mentioned it in last talk. And he would go up and say, um, you know what, Joe, I just spoke to, um, to Ben. Ben feels really bad what he did to you. He wants to make up. And he goes to Ben. He says, Ben, I just spoke to Joe. Joe feels really bad what he did to you. He wants to make up. The two of them meet. They hug each other. They make up. And once again, love prevails. Okay? So reach out there. And reach out with some love, with some compassion. And remember, forget about rebuking. Let, that's, that's God's job. Let God Almighty be the judge, okay? Once we start judging, we open up a can of worms. And, and then we're, we often become the victims of that process. So, let's help another to make the right choice, to make good choices, only if it's done with love and compassion. Like the first part of this verse says, you, you're, not, you're not doing it out of hatred. You're not doing it out of a negative emotion. You're not doing it because you feel insulted by what this person is doing. You feel like, oh, you're so much better. You're doing it from compassion and you want to help the person clarify the situation. And so when I spoke to the student of mine, I told him what Aaron used to do. Maybe let's take a different approach. So he, he actually went up to this guy. Well, let's call him Ruvain again. And he said, I want to put down all the positive things that you're getting from this path that you're choosing and all the negative things. Okay, you're making a lot of money now, great. Negative, it's illegal. B, it makes you feel good. C, it might be screwing up your body. And he would list the positive and the negative. And then he said, okay, let's talk about it. You know, I, if you're addicted, you need professional help. If you're not addicted, then maybe, maybe there's something else we could do. Maybe something else you could, you know, you could choose to find your joy in, okay? So I'm, again, I'm not saying that it worked. But I'm saying that has a much better chance of it working. Okay, the next time you see that in the Torah where it's translated, you shall surely rebuke, cross it out with a big X, and write in the words, help clarify. Help make good choices. All right, peace in, everybody. Have a wonderful Shabbat Shalom and a great weekend. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace.